Hi, I'm Dr. Desi Moodley, and uh, welcome to this live recording from Austria. I will be talking to you today about the coronavirus and how the use of masks will prevent uh, the spread of the infection. So this virus is called the coronavirus because um, it has these spikes on the top that protrudes, protruding from the virus itself and resembling a corona, a corona meaning a crown. So typically um, it measures around about 0.01 to 0.02 uh, microns. And um, if you cut through in cross section, you'll notice that the RNA is to one side and the spikes are made of glycoprotein on the other side. And a 3D modeling of this coronavirus shows again in cross section, the RNA on the one side, surrounded by an envelope of uh, a lipid layer. And this is quite important, this lipid layer, mainly because uh, we know that lipid layers are dissolved or broken down by uh, soap solutions. So that is why it's so important to, to wash your hands regularly because the soap solution actually will dissolve this lipid layer and thereby destroying the virus. So how long should you wash your hands? It generally takes about 20 seconds to cover all parts of the hands um, when you wash it. Um, it's, you don't need to start counting 20, but if you sing happy birthday twice, you will cover 20 seconds, okay? So we know that this coronavirus is spread um, uh, through the, or in, uh, infects the upper respiratory tract, including the lungs as well. And it is mainly airborne. It enters into the lower parts of the lung and attaches itself to the lining of the lung tissue. So within the lining or on the lining of the lung, we find small receptors called ACE2 receptors. These are angiotensin converting enzyme 2. And so if you look on the right side of the slide, you will see the ACE2 receptor. Okay, and then the virus, the spike of the virus itself attaches to this ACE2 receptor, almost like a key lock system. So if you look closer again, you will see these spikes attaching directly onto this ACE2 receptor. So if we look at that diagrammatically, we find that this ACE2 receptor is present on the lining of the tissue, then the virus itself locks onto this ACE2 receptor and then breaks down the cell wall of this host cell and then the RNA goes into the cell, takes over the action of the cell and replicating itself, thereby damaging the host tissue. And that's how it continuously grows and causes death of the lung tissue. So that's the main pathogenesis of this coronavirus. So what about the spread of the disease itself? How does this disease caused by coronavirus spread in the body? Okay, we know that it's a respiratory illness. The, co the coronavirus is mainly spread through droplets. So if someone's talking, these droplets start to uh, well, come out while he's talking. And then if someone else breathes, breathes those droplets in, enters into the lung tissue and causes infection. If these droplets remain floating on the surface, causes an aerosol, and then if you go in later, you can breathe that aerosol and can get infected. Studies have recently shown that if there's no circulation of air in the room itself, and if you walk much later, you can still breathe that, uh, those viruses. So for example, if someone sneezed in the elevator and then you walk in later, there's a possibility that that aerosol may still be in there and you can breathe that in. So how do we spread? How do we prevent the spread of this infection? My opinion is that you need to not get the disease, number one. And if at all you get infected, you should make sure that you don't infect someone else. So how do you not get the disease? How do you prevent yourself from not getting it? Okay, the simplest and most effective way is the use of a face mask because then you are blocking both the portals of entry, the mouth and the nose into the lungs. So if you block that, technically you're not going to get viruses into your lungs. Okay, so face masks will help prevent the infection. But herein lies the problem. Not all face masks are made equal. 
That is a big problem. So let's look at some of the face masks, face masks that are available on the market today. Number one, we have the common cloth face mask that's homemade. How effective is it? They are quite fancy now, of course. People make fancy face masks. But how effective is it? It'll provide some sort of protection, but does not prevent the virus from penetrating into the lungs. Okay. Number two, we have surgical masks. These are used uh, uh, quite often in, in the medical and dental field. So the problem with this mask is, especially for the general public, they are not worn properly. For example, it's just only covering the mouth in this instance. Sometimes they even cover the nose and the eyes. <laughs> and the other problem is this does not, this mask does not kill the virus. So that if viruses land on the surface of this, quite often, especially for the general public, when removing it, you need to take care not to touch the surface. If you touch the surface, you need to make sure you wash your hands thoroughly. The other big problem that we have with these surgical masks is that disposable of this mask. So because they still have live bacteria on the surface, so and live viruses as well, the possibility is if you throw that, someone else can pick it up and can get infected. So it's very important that when you dispose of these masks to make sure that it goes down through uh, into a plastic uh, packet or into medical waste. Next, we have the, the, the surgical mask itself fits quite loosely and the advantage of the surgical, surgical mask is it is water resistance. So because it fits loosely, there is a problem that you can get portals of entry from the side. So you need to make sure when using this mask to make sure it fits properly in the, around the face. It feels comfortable. That's why it's very popular amongst dentists and medical practitioners working all day with a mask that it's, uh, um, you can breathe well through, with, through this mask. If worn incorrectly, it is less effective at stopping small particles from entering into the mouth. So for this reason, a study that was published recently by the Journal of Ameri American Dental Association, they still contend that there is not enough proof that these masks may provide full protection against the virus. So then what is the purpose of wearing the mask? Well, one of the reasons that you should wear the mask at all times is that this will prevent you from touching your face or your nose. Okay, so at least that way you will protect yourself. Then the second important reason is that when you are speaking or coughing, at least it will prevent the aerosol from going into the, into the atmosphere or into the air. So in that way, it will prevent to some degree some protection. So what about the N95 masks? The N95 is quite popular with, with the, especially with medical uh, personnel. The N stands for non-oil resistance, number one. Then it is 95 stands for giving you 95% protection from the virus. That is for all particles, 0.3 microns in diameter. It has a valve to allow for ease of breathing because it has a complete seal around it. And the material is made of a polypropylene fiber. But there are some, some precautions that we need to take when using this mask. Number one is people with some respiratory problems, chronic respiratory disease, as well as some cardiac problems may find it difficult to breathe. Okay, number one. Number two is they are single use disposable devices. In other words, that the viruses that land on this mask do not die. So they're still quite active. And therefore you need to dispose of it as after single use. Okay, then when, you, when you're disposing of it, it has to be disposed of into me, as medical waste because it may contain live viruses on it. Okay, the problem with this N95 again is does not fit children well because you need a proper seal and obviously the, the child, the face is much smaller, the mask may have gaps between the face and the mask itself. The other issue is that People with facial hair or beards may have a problem with getting a nice tight seal. Because of these current problems regarding the existing masks on the market, Edelweiss has come up with a new virostatic shield mask 
using a new technology. Okay, so now we will discuss the technology of this mask. It is called the Virostatic Shield AVM, this antivirus mask 96. So why 96? Because it gives you 96% protection. Okay, so what is the principle behind this mask? If we go back to the pathogenesis of the coronavirus and how it infects the human cell, we know that the virus itself has those spikes, they lock into the ACE2 receptors. And this is a slide that we've seen previously where the ACE2 receptor present on the lining of the cell gets locked into the virus and then causes damage to the cell itself. So if we look at a 3D rendering of this uh, uh, cell wall, this is the ACE2 receptor and that's the coronavirus itself. And that is the spike from the coronavirus that locks onto this ACE2 receptor. So using the same principle, the same technology, they have transferred this technology onto the mask. So what they used is a bamboo viscose material and added these particles onto this, onto this material. So what they've done is injected particles that are similar to these ACE2 receptors. So if this is the ACE2 receptor, they have manufactured or fabricated this ACE2 receptor in the laboratory to mimic the ACE2 receptor and then transferred that uh, protein onto the cell. So in other words, what they have done is they are trying to fool the virus into thinking that it is an ACE2 receptor. So now what actually happens is when the virus lands onto the mask, it thinks it's an ACE2 receptor and binds onto that artificial protein. Thereby, because it's not a human cell, there's no host to live in, it automatically dies. So that is basically the principle of the Edelweiss um, virostatic shield. And it provides 96% effectiveness in blocking the virus uh, passing through this mask. So what is it? It's 96, AVM 96. 96 means that it's reducing 96% of the microbial intake. It is classified as FPP2R, R meaning it is oil resistant, and FPP2 requires a minimum, minimum of 95% um, uh, blockage. So in this instance, the Edelweiss virus study shield provides 96%, conforming to the regulatory standards. So it is made of, as I said previously, made of the bamboo viscose material. It has about four to five percent viscose material, mainly because to allow for stretchability and comfort for the user. Then it, the active product itself or the active ingredient is an anti-infective agent, which is classified as a substance that will prevent infectious disease either by killing it or destroying the uh, virus itself. So the key behind the effectiveness of this new virus uh, virus static shield is this chemical reaction between the protein and the virus to bluff or to 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 almost uh, make the virus think that it is attacking the ACE2 receptor, but in fact it is attacking the artificial protein on the on the uh, mask. So the coated protein is similar to that found in the human upper respiratory tract. So the virus now is fooled into thinking that it's a host cell and sticks itself onto this uh, artificial protein and thereby dies. So when, when the virus lands on this, a chemical reaction takes place where the virus itself locks onto this artificial protein and because there's no human host cell, it immediately dies. So some studies that we have, this was published in the medical press in 20, 2016. This was done by Professor Sabine Fleisch and who identified the coating to mimic the cells of the nasal passages or upper respiratory tract. And they injected those cells onto the mask. And they found that with the flu virus, it could capture over 99%. Another study, an independent university study, where they have taken the same material with one sample they've created, uh, they have coated with the uh, artificial coating or the virus static coating and the other sample was uncoated. 
and they compared the two, they found that when it was coated, there was a 96% uh, protection against the virus. So some reports coming out of the press because of this excitement generated from the new technology, the mail in the UK, they said that the virus fat could help prevent flu. Fabric coating for masks and air filters isolates the particles that spread the illness. Then the mirror, scientists create germ trap to reduce spread of flu in the UK. BBC, coronavirus, the new inventions inspired by a pandemic. The independent, scientists create a new germ trap that can protect individuals. The telegraph, researchers from the University of Manchester have developed a new way of tra trapping the flu virus to spread, to prevent the spread of this infection. So there is great excitement with this new virus static and this new technology whereby the virus itself is uh, mimicked, is, uh, is fooled into thinking that it's attacking the, uh, the respiratory cells itself. The Sunday Times, the virus killing mask is ready now for mass production. Thank you very much. My thanks goes to Jasmine for the video production and photography. Should you have any questions, please contact me via the Edelweiss offices and I'll be just too glad to answer any further questions. Thank you very much.